cheese steaks. Besides tasting amazing, they are also super easy to make. After my previous Philly cheesesteak video, you guys asked me to go ahead and make the most expensive version there is. And you know there's no way I'm gonna let you down. This is making the most expensive Philly cheesesteak in the world. So let's do it! In order to do this correctly, the first thing I needed is some research, so I went straight back to Philadelphia for it. And let me just tell you, if you've never been to Philadelphia, do it. It is an amazing city and something that must be experienced. And the first stop is always the classics, Pat's and Geno's. Like I mentioned on my previous video, they are fantastic. However, they are completely different from each other. It is something I recommend you giving it a try because they are the originals. And you can't go wrong with either one of them. Right after those two, I went straight to gym steaks. And like always, you gotta be ready for the line. From the outside, they have some large windows where you can watch the masters make their Philly cheese steaks. But when you finally get inside, be expected to have even more lines. But since the masters work really fast, it goes real quick. Unlike Pets and Geno's which use ribeyes for their steaks, Jim's uses top round. However, they use USDA choice Black Angus beef. And after placing my order and seeing them making it, this is what the Philly cheese steaks from Jim's looks like. I must say, it is delicious. And the overall experience was awesome. Going to the classics and knowing where they come from, it is always a must. And it's something I definitely recommend you giving it a try. The following stop was the Lissandro steaks. And if you think Jim was busy, uh-uh, you're wrong. This was insane and complete madness. The biggest issue is that the place is small. And seeing the people eating on the counter just makes you even more hungry. Watching them make the Philly cheese steaks is impressive. And it is so awesome to see that huge mountain of beef. I was not able to tell which cut of beef they use. But I can tell you one thing, they do work fast. And you can tell that the guys that are making them is not their first day on the job. Once you place your order, they ask you to wait outside so they can call you out on the microphone. Since the place is quite small, it is best to eat outside. And once I got mine, this is what the De La Sandra looks like. Immediately I could tell there's way more steak than all the others. I totally understand why all of my subscribers were asking me to check this one out last time. And if you are having any feeling, you gotta check it out. That was an amazing Philly cheesesteak. The last stop for my research was Barkley Prime. This is where they sell the most expensive Philly cheesesteak in Philadelphia. Don't believe me? Let me show it to you. This is the menu. You see right here? Barkley Prime cheesesteak. It has Wagyu ribeye, foie gras, onions, truffle cheese whiz, and baked on a freshly sesame roll. 120 bucks. Ouch. And at the beginning, they gave me a bread, which is called puffers. I mean, you think it's gonna be big, but when you bite into it, it's completely hollow. However, it was really good. But after getting my appetizer, which was a lobster bisque, my Philly cheesesteak finally arrived. And this is what it looks like. Just like the menu said, on a sesame bun and full of Wagyu beef inside. Couldn't find the frog grab, but I'm pretty sure it's in there. And it looks pretty tasty. Oh, and don't forget the champagne. To soften it up the 120 bucks, they give you a free glass. As I took a bite of my 120 bucks Philly cheesesteak, I got a lot of things to say. But I'm gonna tell you about that in the end of the video when we compare it to the one I'm doing. And that one will be several times more expensive than this. But if you wanna know overall if it was good, yes, it was. It was very good. As a matter of fact, it was excellent. However, some things needs to be said. But now that you've seen all the research I've made to make this one amazing Philly cheesesteak, it is time for me to make my version. So let's do it! I'm gonna make two versions for you. The first one is with Shutterclawed Wagyu. This is way cheaper than Japanese Wagyu A5, which will be the next. The first thing to do is to remove all the silver skin and connective tissue. Once that's done, I like to put it in the freezer to firm up so I can cut it real thin. After one hour in the freezer, you can really appreciate the marbling of this beef. It is nothing like A5, but you can see how wonderful it looks. The next step is to slice everything as thin as possible. Now I'm not looking for ground beef. We are making Philly cheese steak not Philly hamburgers. In the end, I was left with nice little small square of steaks. And that is exactly what I'm looking for. And a quick tip, you don't want to season your steak right now. You want to season it as it's being cooked and salt and pepper is good enough. And this is Japanese Wagyu A5, the most expensive steak in the world. It is a 1 inch thick New York strip marbling score 11. If you ever wonder what the best of the best looks like, this is it. No other cut of beef come even close. It is the grand champion of beef. In order to cut it real thin, the first thing to do is to partially freeze it. After one hour, it was firm enough to cut it real thin. And as I'm cutting, you can really appreciate the marbling of this steak. If by any means you think that this is regular fat, it is not. I know that it looks 60% fat and 40% beef. 
But this fat is like butter, and if you've never had it, it is difficult to describe. The taste and the texture is completely different than regular fat. But once I was done slicing, I was left with beautiful strips of Japanese Wagyu A5. If you are thinking I'm gonna use regular oil with these steaks, you are mistaken. I'm gonna be rendering this fat to make Japanese Wagyu A5 tallow, which is basically beef fat. Now let's talk about bread. If you wanna go classic, you have to use the Italian. You don't want it crunchy, it needs to be soft. That is how they do it in Philadelphia and the way I recommend it. This is Meianoche bread. It is very similar to brioche, super soft, it has a lot of fat, and also my nephew's favorite bread. And I'll be using it for the less expensive version. And this is Italian bread with everything on it. I'll be using this one for the most expensive Philly cheese steak in the world. And if you guys are interested in making any of these breads, just make sure you put a comment down below and I'll make sure to give you the recipe. Since I'm pretty sure they use truffle oil in the restaurant, I'm gonna be using real truffle butter. To make it, it's pretty straightforward. Grab the black truffle and cut it into little pieces. If you don't have a shaver, you can also use a micro-grater. Throw everything into the food processor, mix it with butter, put it in the refrigerator, let it sit and you are left with beautiful truffled butter. This is the beginning for our cheese whiz. And the next item is provolone cheese. And to make it, it's super easy to do. Throw in your truffled butter and let it melt. Once that's done, add a little bit of heavy whipping cream and mix it well. Under low heat, add in your provolone cheese. Mix everything together until you make a nice sauce. If it starts to get too thick, add a little bit of more heavy whipping cream. Remember, exact amount and ingredients always on the description down below. Once the cheese has been melted and combined together, you are left with the perfect and most amazing cheese whiz in the world. This, my friends, cannot be bought. You gotta make it. And it is delicious. But now that we have everything ready, it is time to make the most expensive Philly cheese steak in the world. So let's do it. All right, everybody, we have our beautiful cheese steaks here. What do you think, Angel? They look awesome. They do. We have two different kinds. I want to try it. I want to see which one is best, which one you like best. Go. All right, let's go with this one first. We'll go with this one second. Okay. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Oh, that's good. I went for a big bite. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know if it's the cheese or if it's fatty. It's a little fatty. Yeah, yeah. You know why you taste a little bit fattier? Because this is a Wagyu, but it's not like an A5 or, a, you know, a Wagyu Marbling Score 7. It's not Australian? It's not Australian. It's a, just like a regular cheesesteak, but a little bit fattier. Nothing crazy different. Just a little bit more fat. Let's go for the second one, buddy. You tell me if there's any difference. You're, wow, the creaminess of this one is off the chain. <laughs> I might have to go without you. You better hurry up and say cheers. <laughs> All right, cheers, buddy. Let's go. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big difference, boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. You tell me. <laughs> that custom-made cheese whiz is off the chain. No, this is incredible. This is also Wagyu? Yes, but which kind? A5. You can tell it's a lot of fat. You guys probably saw that when I was making it. The amount of pool of fat on the bottom of the pan it's absolutely ridiculous. It is very rich, but it's also extremely flavorful. It is wonderful, wonderful in every way. Here's what I gotta say. 
on the restaurant, I can guarantee you it is not Wagyu A5. The restaurant is kind of like this one here, everybody. I can guarantee you there's no way that it is not even close to a, like an A4 or maybe even A3, probably an A1. That steak is nothing close to it. Or maybe it's just American Wagyu. I'm not quite sure. And also, they put too much truffle. So the truffle is extremely powerful on that steak. On this one, it's very mild. It's, it's very, it comes in, but it doesn't come in so strong. Exactly. I think there, they're using truffle oil instead of real truffle. So they just dump a lot of oil. You can really taste too much of the truffle. So it kind of threw me off a little bit. I think this is a wonderful experience, but I'm not quite sure if it will be worth making a Philly cheese steak out of it. All right, give me a scenario though. Why are you eating it? To experience something completely different that you never experienced before. Yes. Then it makes sense. I agree. Yeah. yeah. If you want to try something that you have never seen or experienced before, it is a great experience. Is it worth just to make it just to make it? No. No, no, no. No, no, no. If you're just like, damn, I'm pretty hungry right now. <laughs> I wonder what I should eat. Let me eat a... a go for this one. Yeah. <laughs> or just go for the regular or one. Like, just make a regular... The <laughs> regular one. But if you are in for something completely different, out of the ordinary, something you've never tried before, yeah, this, to this taste one. your palate, to test something new, just like a Japanese Wagyu A5, it is an experienced yeah. steak. You're not gonna eat it every day. Agree? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God I'm here. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.